Okay, so uh, just a recap of example six, and we kind of uh, talked about this one at the end of yesterday. So we're finding the derivative of f at an x value of four, okay? So essentially we wanna know what is the slope of the line, okay, at x equals four. So if we look where four is, we talked about this being four on the graph. If we go up from here, up from here, okay? We want to know at this point, what is the slope of the line? Now, since our line is already a straight line, right? Now, what we should say is, three, three, two, one, okay. So we left off a little bit on, we went over number six yesterday. So just to recap, the derivative of f prime, so the derivative of f at, of four, so f prime of four, the derivative of f at when x is equal to four. Three, two, one. Okay, we finished up number six. So just to recap um, yesterday, we found f prime of four is what they're asking for in the graph. We want to find that. So what they're asking for is what is the slope, okay, of the tangent line at x equals four, when x is four. So when we look at our graph and we see four in the graph, okay, we go to the, to the line somewhere over here, all right, we want to know what's the slope of the tangent line. And since this graph, this graph of f, this is the function f, Okay, the tangent line is actually going to be on, is going to overlap the line that's already there, this line. So the tangent line, sorry, this is not really drawing great right now, but the tangent line is just overlapping that line. So the slope of this line is the slope of the tangent line. And so we said yesterday, if we just do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 from any two points of the line, we can use 6, 13, and 0, 1 here. So 13 minus 1. 6 minus 0 is 12 over 6, so the slope is just 2, okay? We're going to spend a day later going over the equation of the tangent line, but we're going to just talk about it in number 7, okay? Now, this graph is not the same as this one. Obviously, it, the function's different, right? But also, this was the graph of the original function, okay? This is what the graph of the function looked like. This is the graph of the derivative, okay? So when you calculate the slopes of all the tangent lines for the graph, okay, and you graph those values, the x value and the slope of the tangent line, you get this curve. This is what you're getting, okay? This is what this graph is. So when I wanna know what f prime of, let's say, two is, if I go to two, and the, this number here is the point, let's say, two, zero, then f prime of two is just the y value zero, that's it. So the y value is the derivative on this graph because it's y equals f prime of x, okay? So make sure you know the check to see if it's the graph of the function or the graph of the derivative. So the point 14 negative two on the graph of f of x, okay? An equation of the tangent line of f at 14, 2 is. So remember, we talked about this today. We're going to use the point slope form. y minus y1 equals, I wrote y equals, y minus y1 equals the slope, okay, times x minus x1. This is, though, right, This we want to do f prime of 14, okay, for m. We want to know the slope. So when you go to 14 on the number line, which is right here, okay, the y value is three. So that means that f prime, the derivative, when x is 14 is three. This is the slope, okay? That's the slope, it's three. So we're gonna put three in for m, okay? The derivative of f when x is 14. That's the slope of the tangent line when x is 14, all right? The x value we know is right here. So this is x1, okay, easy enough, and this is y1, that's it, okay? So we're gonna do y minus negative two equals three times x minus 14. And then minus a negative is a plus, so we get y plus two 
equals 3 times x minus 14. There's our equation. That's it. That's how we do the slope of the tangent. Okay? So what we talked about today, and we're not, like I said, we're not going to go into it big time. This is the y value. This is f of 14. Okay? So this is y minus f of 14, okay, which is negative 2, all right, equals the derivative of f of x at 14, okay, that's the slope of the tangent line, and then this is just x minus 14, that's the x value. This is what the equation of the tangent line always is, okay, that's it. So, let's take a look at the next example, example 8. If the line y or 2x plus 3y equals k is tangent to the graph, okay, of f of x at the point where x equals 5. So this is the tangent line. This is the slope of the tangent line, okay, of that graph where x is 5. Then the value of this limit of when x approaches 5 of f of x minus f of 5 or x minus 5. Now remember, what is this? What is this? Okay. This is how we figure out what the derivative of f is at 5. That's it, okay? But remember, this is just the slope of the tangent line, okay, at x equals 5 on f, on f of x, okay, on this function. So if this is the tangent line, all we have to do is find the slope of this equation, and that's what this equals. That's it, okay? So if I take 2x plus 3y equals k, because this is the equation of the tangent line, we're just going to solve for y to get the slope. That's it. So subtract 2x. I don't even care what k is. It doesn't matter. 3y equals negative 2x, okay? Plus k, and then we just divide everything by 3. So y equals negative 2 thirds x plus k over 3. And to get the slope, I don't need this. This doesn't matter to me. All I care about is the number in front of the x here. That's my slope. So the derivative, okay, of f at 5, a prime of, of 5, is just negative 2 thirds. That's what this whole thing equals, the slope of the tangent line. That's it. So the answer is just all right, now we, okay, we're previously doing, you guys remember from the homework and some of the questions, we were evaluating these limits, okay, using this function. Remember I told you like we're not going to be doing this much longer, this is when we're not doing it much longer right now, okay. So we're going to talk about how to use what's called the power rule, okay, and the, um, today, and a couple other rules that are going to make taking derivatives super easy. So the constant rule, the power rule, special case, the constant multiple rule, and, and then today, and we're going to um, get into a little bit of derivative polynomials, okay? So before we begin, these two dudes, Lagrange and Leibniz, okay, very famous mathematicians, and they came up, let's zoom in here a little bit, they came up with the notation we're going to use today. Okay, the notation we're going to use today. I gotta go find these guys again. All right. So Lagrange is what we've been doing, right? F prime of x or y prime. These are the notations that he used when he was doing his math. And Leibniz used the notation that you see written here, d over dx. Okay. Normally you'll see like dy over dx. Okay, and what this means is this is the derivative of y with respect to x. So we're taking the derivative of function y with respect to x, meaning that there's the x's are, are, are what's in the function, like what the, what the function is made out of, okay, the equation part. All right. So like when you say like solve for r with respect to that's what we're talking about here. So Lagrange with the primes, Leibniz is with the fractions. Okay, all right. So the constant rule we're going to say the derivative with respect to x of c of any constant doesn't matter what it is is always zero. Okay. 
So if we did the derivative with respect to x, okay, of one, that's zero, always. All right, special case of the power rule, which we'll get to in a second. Now, what if I gave you some of some of the uses of the power rule? So some some easy ones. So the derivative, okay, with respect to x. And then what is it over here? So I'll give you the function. Let's do this. Okay, here's the function f of x. And this is the derivative of x. So if we did 3x squared, okay, the derivative is 6x. Okay, 4x cubed is 12x squared. All right, what if we did x to the negative 4? Well, that's negative 4x to the negative 5th. So hopefully you're getting the pattern here, right? Okay, and if you if you don't see it, let's take an easy one like x squared, and this becomes 2x or 2x to the first. So what are we doing? The power rule says, okay, when you have x to any power, we bring the power in front to be the coefficient, and then we decrease the exponent by 1. Okay, and in order for f to be differentiable, at that point, whatever x is, okay, at x equals zero, n must be a number such that x to the n minus one is defined with an open interval containing zero, okay? So, all right, it's gotta be differentiable. It's gotta be, um, it's gotta be a continuous function in order for us to take the derivative. So, take a look at example number one, all right? And then we'll look at some other cases and how do we handle square roots and then fractions on the bottom here. So nice and easy, right? The derivative, so f prime of x, okay? We're gonna take the coefficient, or sorry, the exponent becomes the coefficient, so move it to the front, and then decrease it by one, five x to the fourth, that's it. Okay, it's easy as that. Now, we can't do radical. We don't wanna do the, the radical like this. We wanna handle it as a fractional exponent. So convert your radicals to fractional exponents. Now, I always remember, okay, that when I do uh, the square root, this is referred to as the index. That's the number in the little check mark, okay? And then it tells you what kind of root it is. We have our variable, and it's raised to a certain power. So it's always the base, okay, where you're taking the exponent of, that's the base, and then it's power over index, POI, right? Power over index, okay? Power over index. So I'm going to rewrite this, g of x, as x to the power over index, 3 fourths. Okay, fractional exponents. Now, we're going to go ahead and take the derivative. So g prime of x is equal to, right, exponent becomes the coefficient, so that's 3 fourths, x, and then 1 minus 3 fourths, right? So 4 over 4 minus 3 over 4 is negative 1 fourth like a dollar minus three quarters, right? Okay, problem. You can't have negative exponents. You can't do it. So we need to, right? We need to move this. When any time you have a negative exponent, like x to the negative a, we're going to rewrite it, okay? This is equal to x over, sorry, not x, one over. It's the reciprocal, okay? And then you change the negative to the positive exponent, okay? So all we're going to do is write g prime of x is equal to, so it's 3 fourths times 1 over, and that's why you can just write it, that's why we keep this, this is going to go to the bottom, okay, x to the 1 fourth. This is acceptable, okay, and normally we would just drop the 1 and write this as 3 over, okay, x to the 1 fourth. Or I could rewrite this fractional exponent as a radical now. And I could say 3 over 4. It's a square root, power over index. So 4 is the index, the fourth root of x. Either of these two are okay. This is not okay. That's not okay. I realize I just drew the lines and it doesn't really matter. What about when x is on the bottom? You got to rewrite it. Remember, this is going to be rewritten as a negative exponent. So we want to rewrite it as x to the negative 3. And now we're going to go ahead and do use our power rule. So, okay, 
So now we're going to do y prime. We can write y prime instead. Okay. Equals, and then it's negative three x to the, and negative three minus one is negative four. Remember, can't have negative exponents. So move that to the bottom. It's negative three over x to the fourth. There's our answer. Okay. So you can see this as f prime of x. We can write y prime. Okay. And we can also write this as in our um, form like Leibniz here. Gotta love that hair. All right. Let's see what we got here. So example number two. Okay. We're going to do the constant multiple. So when we do the derivative, okay, with respect to x, constant times a function, it's just the constant times the derivative of the function. Okay, so we're going to write this like Leibniz. We're going to write dy. We're going to write, use y because that is what our function is. Derivative of y with respect to x of 2x to the 7th. And then that's 2 times, move the exponent to the coefficient, and then decrease the exponent by 1. Okay? And so this is equal to 14x to the 6th. All right, remember, we're going to rewrite this with our exponent. We don't want it in the denominator, so it's 3x to the negative 2. And now we're going to do the derivative. Okay, so since this doesn't have a y and this one did, we're going to do g prime of x. All right, because this is in function notation. Good. Equals. So remember, g prime of x, it's going to be 3 times negative 2x, decrease the exponent to the negative 3. So it's negative 6x to the negative 3. And we want to bring this down, g prime of x. Okay. All right, remember, we can't do this. We need to convert this. So power over index, power over index, x to the fifth, 5 sixths over 8. And what we actually want to do is instead of doing this as over 8, we want to just kind of do this as 1 8. Let's do a fraction times this. So there's our constant. There's our function. So f prime of x, okay, is equal to 1 eighth times, right, exponent to the front, and then decrease by 1, so negative 1 sixth. Okay, two problems, right? Can't leave a negative exponent, and we're going to combine that. So this is 5 over 48, and then remember the x is going to go to the bottom, x to the 1 sixth x, or we can rewrite this to be 5 over 48, and then power over index is the sixth root of x to the first or x. Okay? All right, so two ones that we haven't seen yet, but we talked about. If f of x, let's change colors here so we can see this is going to stand out. Okay? Two of them that we haven't seen. Special cases, once again. Okay, if f of x is equal to just a number, 4, okay, the derivative of that, no matter what the constant is, is always 0. Okay, because technically this is 4x to the 0 power, right? We don't want to get into it, though, because then it looks like we're supposed to have negative 1. Don't worry about it. If there isn't an x, it's just 0. Done. Okay, derivative constant, 0. The other one, f prime of x, okay, is just 1. And this, actually, you can use the power rule for this, right? x to the first, 1 times x to the 0 power. x to the 0 power is 1, so it's just 1, all right? But just take it easy. Derivative of x is 1. That's it. So if you did the derivative of 2x, right, this would just be 2 times 1, or just 2, right? 2 times x, the derivative of x, and that's 1, so just 2. Nice and easy. Okay. How do we handle these ones when we're doing parentheses? All right, remember, if there's parentheses here, we want to get rid of these before we do the derivative. Nice and easy. Okay, so see if you can try these ones on your own. All right, pause it, try A. I'll give you the answer. Ready? Go. Okay, hopefully you ended up with <clears throat> 3 over 2x cubed. All right, or 3 over 8 times 4x cubed, but we can reduce the 8 and the 4, all right, to give you 3 halves times x cubed, or 3x cubed over 2. You can also move the x to the top here. So that was another option. All right, see if you can try letter B. Now, remember, just for this one, 
we want to take care of this exponent and the, the parentheses keep get rid of that first okay so really the we're going to distribute this exponent in so this is going to become kind of three to the fourth and x to the fourth here so re really 81 x to the fourth over eight okay give this one a try okay and hopefully we ended up with 81 x cubed over two so once again four and then x cubed we can reduce the eight and the four and we end up here all right let's try this one on your own let's see what you guys get okay and so uh same thing here we're going to distribute that two through so we're going to get seven squared is 49 x over uh times x squared so nine over that and then remember we're going to separate it as nine over 49 x to the negative two use our power rule to get negative two uh, x cubed sorry x to the negative three and then we're going to multiply together. So the negative 2 is going to go to the top to give us negative 18. And then we're going to handle this and move it to the bottom to get negative 18 uh, over 49x cubed as our final answer. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at the derivative of some polynomials. So, nice and easy. The derivative of the sum of two polynomials is just the derivative of the first plus the derivative of the second. And the difference is the same thing. The derivative of the difference of two polynomials, okay, same thing. Derivative of the first minus the derivative of the second, okay? Also, keep in mind that when you're doing the derivative, okay, you're creating, right, essentially uh, an expression where you can plug in to find the slope of the tangent line. So all of these answers, okay, can be evaluated you plugging in an x, x value, and it will give you the slope of the tangent line okay, for this function at that point. So that's all we're doing here is, is being able to evaluate the slope of the tangent line for this function at whatever point we want to plug in. So keep in mind that that's what the derivative is doing. Now, if you remember back up a couple of lessons ago when we were doing these crazy things, right? Okay, we were evaluating, right, the derivatives like, like this one, perfect, okay? And we said, hey, remember, you're not gonna have to do all of this stuff anymore, right? Today's the day we don't have to do it anymore. If we wanted to evaluate this using our sum, our, our sum rule for, um, for polynomials, the derivative, right, of f of x is a derivative of x squared, right, x squared, which we know is 2x, plus the derivative of 1, which is just um, 0, right? And so the derivative of f of x is just 2x. And so then when I do the derivative of f at 1 and I plug in 1, I just get 2, right? We don't have to do the limit stuff anymore. We can take the derivative and then just plug in. Like, that's it, okay? It comes a lot easier to do now, all right? So that limit stuff was kind of like using what we learned so far to get here. And now that we're here, we can make it really easy. Thanks to some of these guys we talked about earlier, all right? So let's take a look. So how are we gonna handle the questions in this case? What do you think we can do here? Okay, hopefully you can kind of remember that like when I do three, right, over four plus one over four, I'm actually doing three plus one over four, right, four over four. I can actually work backwards and I can separate these using that common denominator. So I'm gonna to wanna to rewrite this, okay, as f of x equals x cubed over x minus 4x over x plus 5 over x. That doesn't look like an x, it looks like a 4, okay? Got it? And then we can take the derivative. But wait, there's more. We can still reduce this. We haven't even done any of the calculus set. This is all algebra stuff. So this is just f of x equals, like x cubed over x is x squared, right? Minus 4x over x is just 4. And we want to rewrite this. We don't want this x in the bottom, so this is going to be 5x to the negative first, okay? And now we're going to go ahead and take the derivative. And the sum rule is just saying, like, treat these like individual problems. Each of these is their own individual kind of function here, okay? So the derivative of f of x is just take the derivative of the first one, right? And because of the plus and minus signs, this is just separating it into different problems. So this is just 2x right, minus, the derivative of constant, right, is always zero, right, plus, now we're going to do this one, so this is five times the derivative of this one, using our, our product rule before, not product rule, that's different, 
okay? The constant times our function rule, and this is negative one, okay? X to the negative two. Easy enough, and now we just kind of clean everything up. So f of x is equal to, okay? I say f, f prime of x, not f of x, okay? So the derivative of f of x, all right, is two x, and then this is gonna become minus five, and because of the negative two, this has to go to the bottom over x squared. That's our derivative. So that is essentially, okay, giving us um, the equation of the tangent line uh, to the function, and then we just plug in our value to get the slope of that tangent line. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, now let's take a look at B. So same thing here, right? I don't want to take the derivative of this stuff. I can multiply this together, okay, first to simplify it, and then I can take the derivative of, of each of the parts of the function, okay? So we're going to go ahead and write this, or go ahead and distribute this, all right? So g of x equals x times x squared times x, so that's x cubed minus 3x squared. Multiply the 1 through plus 1x, or just x, okay, and then minus 3. And now I can do the derivative of each of the parts of this function, okay? So derivative of the first one is 3x squared, okay? And then we're going to use our constant times the function, which is negative 3 times 2x. Okay, plus derivative of x is just one, and the derivative of a constant is just zero. And so now we can just clean this up. So the derivative or right of g of x or g prime of x is just going to equal 3x squared minus 6x plus 1. Okay, that's it. That's how we're doing that question. Okay, so same thing here, right? We want to get rid of the exponent. So let's try this one, see if you can do this one on your own, and let's compare answers when you're done. Okay, and hopefully you ended up with the uh, f prime of x, okay? Oop, that's not f prime of x. f prime of x equals 3x squared minus 18x plus 27. So let's see what you got there, right? So we started with, remember, negative x or x minus 3 cubed is really x minus 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 3. So we've multiplied these two together. We'll get x squared minus 6x plus 9, and then we distribute the x through to end up with x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 3x squared plus 18x minus 27, and then we can combine our like terms. So we have negative 9x squared, we have plus 27x minus 27, and then we just do our, um, our power rule, right? So 3x squared, 2 times negative 9 is 18x, this just becomes 27, and this becomes 0 and drops out. Okay, let's give D a try, and this will be the last one for today. Before you start, though, remember, when you have this um, a two, like a polynomial in the numerator, make sure we break this up first, okay? And remember, we can think of this as a fractional exponent. So radicals are just fractional exponents. So 2x squared over x to the power over index x to the 1 half minus 3x over x to the 1 half. And now we're just going to subtract exponents. So do this before you start, okay? Let's see what you got to finish. Okay, so hopefully we went with, right, two times three over two. Remember the twos are gonna reduce here. And then the negative three, bring the one half down to the negative one half. So this three over two becomes one half and we subtract one. And then we're gonna get three x to the one half minus three over two. And then remember this has to drop to the denominator. Okay, so 3 over 2x to the 1 half. And then you, this is fine. We take this. Or if you want to put them back to radicals, 3 squared of x minus 3 over 2 squared of x. Okay, so either of those two on the bottom would be acceptable answers. All right. And then if you want to put radicals, go for it. All right, thank you for sticking around through today. Okay, uh, check Schoology for your homework questions. And tomorrow we'll take a look at um, tangent lines. All right. Have yourself a great rest of your day.